finished second a couple of weeks ago in Fresno and doesn't want to do it again. Won a couple of times from the top seat position back in 1983, which was a big year for Sal Bemini. Oh, my. Comes out with an aggressive slasher on lane 15. Like he just split the four and a five pin on that particular shot. They just, the old can opener shot they used to say years ago. I don't know if the terminology is changing or not. Computer opener. Computer opener yeah. now instead of can it's a opener. computer chip. You know, we haven't seen a Durbin left today. That's true. Yeah. Three, six, nine, ten. Speak of the devil, he almost had it. He had the 310. Again, just a struggle on 16 right now. As much as he hooks the ball, what are the chances for making the baby split? Well, he's not going to hook it at this, I don't think. He's going to throw it straight. But remember, he missed the 3-6 in the last game. So that's going through his mind. Too full. Now you that can was, see him tugging a little bit. Right, that was because he missed that 3-6 earlier. He didn't know what the ball was going to do. When you have that doubt in your mind, you don't always make the shot the way you want to. So if he's to win here this afternoon, now it will be a come-from-behind effort. And an effort in which he has to figure out 16. right now. He can send it wide, and when it comes back, it always winds up in the pocket. Did you hear that ball rumbling? I heard the pop of the fingers. I, I heard it rumble over the thumb hole. A little bit. Again, that high roll. Obviously, the ball hit half pocket, snapped the 10 out of there. It didn't impair the roll at all. Well, Salvemini starts. Now he's going to reload. And he could be going over the 25-second time frame. Is it going to fall? Oh, he leaves only the one and the seven, but uh, you could see his concentration was just distracted. He, he stepped back, and uh, like he was, he was hurrying to beat that 25-second clock, I think. Needs to get the ball to the right of the head pin and send it right into the seven. Too much. Missed by a fraction. So both players have now opened up in the early stages of the title game. Well, watching him here, something's wrong. He felt he felt something on the bottom of his foot or something. Yeah, he wipes off the bottom of his. See, that's his sliding foot. So you you have to get uh, be sure that you're going to slide. And now he's rushing the shot to beat that clock. The worst thing that could have happened from him, to him. Well, let's see if he can gather his wits. That one is a tug shot as well. He leaves the baby split on the other side, the 2-7. So right out splits basically in the first two, th two of the first three frames for Salvemini needs to make this to keep himself close. Now, last week we saw Ski Foremski go over the 25-second limit. Cost him five pins. Big difference between the National Tour and the PBA Senior Tour in that ruling. Well, the ruling here is $100 the first time, although he did not go over and then $1,000 the second violation. Nice conversion. Interesting. He threw his normal shot at that, did not straighten it out. Where most right-handers shooting at the 310 straighten it out. See the ball hook into this. Hits the two pin on the left, deflects into the seven, perfectly made. Back the other way comes the 210. So uh, Goebel's uh, split shooting ability will be tested here in the third. He was leading by three pins. That could change dramatically. Amazing. You know, he's had all those strikes in the first three games, but uh, we could see it happening in the last game. He's beginning to lose lane 16, and he hasn't found it yet. Straight. Just missed it. 
So, this could be one of those uh, 180 to 170 battles or something like that. Already this afternoon, Goble has defeated Jimmy Prince, 248 to 202. As you see, our match here in the title game, the scoreboard for it. Goble then went on to beat, beat Mike uh, Shady, 277 to 188, and then it was 222 to 175 over Devers in the semifinal. He's averaging 249 coming in. strike on lane 15 as he trips out the four. And that ball rolled out right at the pocket, Dan, or he had double pinnacle on that one. I'll tell you what, the possibility of going through his mind would be switching balls, but he'll probably decide against it because he's had so much success the previous three games. Salvemini trying to get back into the one-two pocket. And he did. Pretty shot. Beautiful shot by Salvemini, who would love to double up right here and take a 19-pin lead. Joe, five-step player, starts with that right foot, kind of creeps up on the foul line. Backswing gets almost shoulder height, right about shoulder height. The slide goes through. It's just a pretty hand release. When he does it right, he throws a lot of those. Had his best year ever last year, earning in excess of $61,000. Remember, he's trying to stay behind that ball and turn it late. Oh, boy. And the three and the seven. So, like you say, Dad, this is going to come down to a battle of who can make the most splits or stay away from them. Sure. He knew this wasn't going to make it back. Come on, turn right on oh, that disgusted look on his face. He's made none for Goble. Salvemini trying to get the ball to the right of the three pin. Again, throwing his normal shot. Doesn't straighten it out. Perfectly made. Two angles. Have to use that for a tip sometimes. Yep. A little flying drop kick as Salvemini reacts to the split conversion. Down by nine is Goble, who finds the pocket, though, and doubles up. It's a one-pin lead. Well, again, the key is lane 16 for Brian. Brian's operating under an enormous handicap, though. You selected him. Right. It's a lot of pressure. You good, think he realizes good that? Good thing the players can't hear us down there. <laughs> Trying for three in a row. This would put him up by 11. Breaks up the split, just not the firm speed that time. He's got to throw that ball hard or it bites too quickly. If he strokes it at all, it's just biting three, four feet too quickly. Now you can see the disappointment on his face, realizing that's not what he was uh, hoping to accomplish on lane 15. A strike there really applies some heat. Well, see, that 210 he left in the third frame is in the back of his mind. He, he knows if he throws it too hard that that can be the result. Yeah, but don't they tell you one shot at a time? Forget about what happened the last trip? Well, sure, they tell you a lot of things. <laughs> That's what you could do, you know. We're all human. Even match. And again, now he got a reach start the previous time when he backed up. I don't know whether Harry Golden will give him that opportunity again or not. It's interesting that rule was put in for an hour and a half show and really is not uh, necessary almost, but we, it stays there all the time. Not necessary on a two-hour show. Some loud coughing when Joe is on the approach and ready, and he leaves the soft 10. Mixed him up, but nothing hit the 10 pin. Puts him down one pin with a spare conversion. Kim Douglas. Pretty gal. She's enjoying it. Win or lose, right? A lot more fun if you win, though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, 
Shall we find out from our uh, people down below uh, that Harry Golden reset the clock because a spectator disturbed Sal Joe Salvemini? So he has not been fined, even though he backed off twice. That is that provision, by the way, is within the rule. Then. A one-pin match just past the halfway point. Has to hurry. Oh, my goodness. The three, six, seven, nine. And that is his, if you count the washout as a split, that's his fourth split of the game. I always counted the washout as a split, but... Technically, it isn't. He hangs this over the edge. He almost got zero. Almost would have been better off getting zero. What he, this is makeable. You've got to hit the three pin so far on the right that the six actually goes into the nine and slides across and makes the seven. Oh, and he missed them all. Wow. Well, he was going for the make and ended up with a complete miss as he whips everything to the right. So for Salvemini, it's an open in the seventh. Meanwhile, Goble, while on the bench, takes a 19-pin lead. Wow, eh? Leaves only the six pin. He puts his hands down safe. Right now, Brian knows that he's got this match in hand. He knows that Salvemini has lost. He's just trying actually to force that ball into the pocket two or three more times. Important thing now, make the spare and head on to the eighth frame. Right. Eighth frame action, 18 pins ahead. Speed is critical. Speed in the law for it. Get it far enough out there, throw it hard enough. Well, he knows how to win matches uh, in the first and second rounds combined in match play. Brian won 10 consecutive matches. He's already won three in a row here, trying to make it four in a row this afternoon. Forces it at the bottom of that swing out further. It delays that roll enough. And when it makes that big move at the end, he really, you see him jump on that at the end? He snapped that hard. And there's the result. Salvemini could post 197, but he needs to get started right now. Yeah. Just totally lost, Denny, although he gets the break and gets the Brooklyn strike. Boy, the wise having to sit together nowadays, I'll tell you, that's torture. But we won't hit the old cliche that it's tougher on them than it is the players. Right. Matching outfits almost there. Let's see if he goes with a big hook or throws it harder and straighter. He hooked it. And got it back. Salvemini wondering, where have you been all my life? Well, he talked in the interview about getting those different reactions and hitting the same place. You know, with his swing, it comes back and has a tendency to bump left. Trouble is that when your swing does that, Dan, it has the tendency to want to do it more under pressure. Oh, flirting with the channel. This one comes up high, and uh, Goble will have to settle with the eight count. And he's happy to get that because that could have been disaster. But what that means right now is that Brian cannot shut out Joe Salvemini. Joe still has a chance. A couple weeks ago, Joe had to step up and throw two strikes in the tent to beat Hugh Miller, and he got the first one and left a seventh in. At the 4 7. Smashes him down. The lead is now eight pins. Count is important. 
There could be a tie in this match. Anything could happen. And don't forget, coming up next, the U.S. Olympic Festival, track and field, also women's diving live from Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Our continuing coverage on ESPN of the U.S. Olympic Festival. And, of course, next week we'll be in Hammond, Indiana. Michael and I at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time for the Hammond Senior Open. Wow, he had the 2-8-10 up there for a second. Winds up with only the 2-pin. Needs to make this and strike. He'll finish with 184. Salvemini definitely has a chance. And he has to be thinking back just a couple of weeks ago when he had an opportunity to double to beat Hugh Miller from the top seat position. <laughs> Count is important. Seven pins, the difference in this game. strike on this ball. He needs a strike here. Eight pins and a spare. That's it. Brian Goble is the winner. Joe just couldn't trust it and give it the room under the pressure of the must-strike win situation. Two weeks in a row for him from the top seed position. So close to winning a couple of titles, stepping up in the 10th and unable to come up with the shot that he needs to win. And I know you've been there before, Michael. It's not an easy feeling. Well, except for the money, second place is the worst place to finish in the tournament. Uh, at least that's always been my opinion. Brian Goble said, you know, I have to start making these uh, championship round appearances pay off. And he did so in fine fashion here this afternoon as he wins the $145,000 Miller Lite Challenge. Brian Goble and Kelly. Joe Salvemini with another second place finish. The way he's bowling, sooner or later, he'll be back in the winner's circle. As Goble applauds the fans here at Golden Pin Lanes in Tucson, he'll remember this in a long, long time because it's his first and also now extends him an invitation to the Firestone Tournament of Champions in Akron.